This is going to be an in the pot swirl. Um, I made a video of an in the pot swirl once before early in my posting to YouTube and I wasn't terribly pleased with that particular soap so I'm going to do another one here. This one will be predominantly white but with a purple stripe in it, hopefully a marbled look. I'm using a mixture of lavender and lemongrass essential oils and the recipe will be vegan and palm free. Here's the recipe I'm using calculated on soapcup.net. Um, it is uh, palm free and vegan. I'm using some fully hydrogenated uh, soy oil uh, to give some hardness to it as well as coconut oil and predominantly olive oil. I'm going to uh, color it with clays. I'll use white kaolin for the white part with some titanium dioxide added and then um, Brazilian purple clay to give a marbled looking purple stripe to the soap. My printed recipe says that I'm using 78 grams of lavender essential oil. Actually I've modified that. I'm using 30 grams of lavender 4042 oil with 30 grams of lavandin oil, uh, which is very similar to lavender but gives a slightly different fragrance, and then 18 grams of lemongrass uh, essential oil. Um, when I mix the two, I like to use quite a lot less lemongrass simply because it's such an overwhelming scent that it can uh, overpower the lavender. This mixture should give a nice um, blend of those fragrances. I'm prehydrating the clays um, with some water beyond what the recipe calls for. So this is a generous teaspoon of Brazilian purple clay with about 10 milliliters of water added to it just to get it nice and wet. And then this is my kaolin and uh, titanium dioxide mixture. Because there's a lot more of it to go in the main batter, I'm using about 50 milliliters extra water in this case. As I usually do, I have my stick blender in a pitcher of hot water. Um, my lye is at 104 Fahrenheit. My oils are at 94 Fahrenheit. Blend this to a good emulsion. I should have said that I've already put the essential oils into the base oils before I started. This um, soap has quite a lot of olive oil in it, and I'm using a fairly light colored olive oil, but still it's likely to give a yellowish cast to the base, which is why I'm adding the titanium dioxide. I still won't be surprised if uh, it's not truly white, if it's more of a yellowy beige. I think that's okay though. Emulsion. 
sit for a few minutes and start to thicken. You're nowhere nearly a trace at this point. try to break up the foam on that surface with a little bit of uh, alcohol. Not a lot, just enough to break those surface bubbles. That seems to work very well. Um, this is still not quite a trace, but I think I'm going to pour it at this point. I'm going to pour, as I usually do, um, north, south, east, west, and then on the center, and then kind of spiral to finish, bring it toward the surface. I'm going to start fairly high here um, so that the purple will sink deeply into the white. Then I'm going to get much closer to do the shallow and then finally surface layers. And as usual with an in-the-pot swirl, uh, it doesn't have to be stirred at all. Some people do give it a quick swipe through with a spatula. I don't think I'm going to do that this time. So I'm using a paper lined wooden mold so I can put it in the oven at 170 degrees. And now I'm just going to pour this back and forth and hopefully get the uh, marbled look swirling to it. moment that purple clay looks kind of brown but I find as it cures it really does turn into a nice lavender purple should have let this thicken a little more. The uh, purple's making very, very thin lines. I had hoped for thicker and darker, but I think this might be pretty nice as it is. Seems like that's always the case that I end up with a soap that is not what I was planning, but it ends up being okay anyway. So I may end up liking this quite a lot. out of this and I'll let that sit for a little while until I can carry it safely without it spilling I will put it in an oven at about 170 degrees Fahrenheit for um, oh, at least a couple hours and then let it cool off and we'll check on it tomorrow this is still before I put it in the oven just to show from a more vertical perspective the very fine lines of the striping. As I said, I wish they were a little bolder than that, but this is what we've got. It is about 24 hours later, and here is the finished soap. It's plenty hard enough to cut, so I'm going to do that. Um, I sprayed the surface with alcohol twice, 
as it was curing and it ended up with a very smooth surface but it's a very predominantly white surface so I'm sure there are some little microscopic bubbles in there so I will plan to uh, shave off just that top surface and hopefully get down to some of the purple striping on the top of that soap. This is uh, a custom wooden mold from Papa's Woodcrafts. I have several of his molds and you've probably seen some of them in my other videos if you've watched those. But he puts miter cuts in the sides so that you can use a large knife and just cut down through and make nice even sized bars. This mold I had custom made to make nine large bars. They weigh about eight and a half ounces a piece. That's really too big for most uses. So what I'll do is cut this mold into nine bars and then uh, afterwards cut each of those in half. So I'll end up with bars that are just over four ounces a piece and I think that's about right. And they'll be almost square. This knife also comes from Papa's Woodcraft. He makes them to go along with the molds. And um, you just line it up with the miter cuts and push it through. I like that concept a lot. freezer paper. So there are the nine bars. So the way I cut these in half, so I use the, the mold with its miter cuts as a guide for cutting the bars in half. So I put a, a piece of paper towel on the bottom since the mold is no longer lined. And then just kind of eyeball this to decide. I'll try to put the crack at exactly the halfway point on that bar of soap. I can do them too deep. Just cut down through that. And that gives me the four, approximately four ounce bars. So I'll finish doing that and then um, we can look at these up close. These are the top surfaces of some of the cut bars. The bottom right one has not had. Uh, any of the surface shaved away from it. The other five have had. Um, this soap obviously has some pretty prominent glycerin rivers. That's not surprising considering how much titanium dioxide I used. It was also a very wet recipe and I also uh, oven processed at 170 degrees which is pretty hot and those three things together all promote glycerin rivers. I think it kind of adds interest to the look of the soap. Um, Perhaps it doesn't look like a natural mineral, but it's kind of pretty. Uh, these are um, from the bottom. Uh, the, this was what was facing the floor of the mold. So the uh, bottom row are exactly as they came out of the mold. The top row, I have shaved off some of that surface. And again, once you do that, it looks a lot like the uh, top surface once it's shaved. These are sides, uh, the one on the far left was against the freezer paper at the mold wall, has not been shaved. The other three are from interior cuts or where I cut that um, 
surface from the mold wall away. And then same situation with the ends. The one on the left was against the freezer paper and has not been shaved. The one on the right is from a cut through the soap or where I did shave away that uh, surface from the end. So there's the overall look of the bars. I'm thinking they may whiten up somewhat as they dry, but these, of course, are only 24 hours old.